Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the next episode of the Hard Compound Live. Um, for those of you uh, who uh, uh, who don't know, um, my name's Rich, and I run and operate the Hard Compound. We're a one-stop shop for all things motorsport, and we can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, we put out uh, three articles a day, in the morning, lunchtime, and in the evening here in the UK, or whatever time that is where you are listening or watching this from. Um, and uh, these take the form of um, uh, race reviews, race previews, throwbacks, birthdays, uh, breaking news, of course, um, and anything else uh, that we like to uh, shake a stick at, um, some cool liveries and things like that. Um, and we cover everything um, from um, uh, uh, single seaters like F1 and IndyCar <clears throat> uh, to, uh, uh, to the British Touring Car Championship, to supercars, NASCAR, um, to uh, bikes, rallying, um, and uh, as I said, anything we can shake a stick at, really. So, um, yeah, if you uh, want to come along, uh, give us a follow. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Just search for The Hard Compound and you'll find us and come and join in the fun. Um, we're just here to share a love of motorsport. And we also do that via live interviews such as this one. These are automatically recorded and they're in the process of being put on podcast uh, providers as well. Just like this, they are live on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Um, and we've had uh, some fantastic guests. Uh, we've uh, done well over 100 of these now. I'm not going to name all the guests, but we've had the honour and the privilege of speaking uh, with uh, the likes of Mr. Mario Andretti, with uh, Mr. Jackie Ix, um, uh, Hans Stuck, John Watson. Um, just uh, two weeks ago, we had uh, the legendary aerodynamicist uh, uh, Frank Durney, fame um, of Williams fame. <clears throat> and we've had uh, a number of drivers on. Uh, from across uh, the F1 and sports car and IndyCar spectrum, the likes of Mr. Derek Warwick and Stephanie Hansen, uh, Mark Blundell, David Brad, Medi Cheever, Carl Vendlinger, um, Mark Shura, Emmanuel Ipiro, um, uh, Mr. Nico Prost, uh, Alex Polo, Will Power, Alonzo Jr., uh, Willie Ribs, Danny Sullivan, Ari Lyondike, uh, Martin Donnelly, Gian Maria Bruni recently, Mecca Salo, and many, many others. But if you're tuning in tonight, you're probably a fan of the British Touring Car Championship. Um, we've had... Um, a great number of the uh, current grid on for a chat. And we've also had legends uh, joining us for a chat, such as uh, Mr. Steve Soper, Rob Gravitt, John Cloned, um, um, Frank Sittner, Carl Jones, Graham Good, um, Gabrielli Tarquini, Ivan Muller, Ricard Rydell, and many, many others. Um, so do go and check them out. They're in, the, uh, they're in the video section on Facebook and in the live section on our YouTube. But don't do it just yet, because we have got a fan favourite from the BTCC of recent years. He's hoping to be on the grid again this year. Um, terrific driver, uh, lovely bloke, and um, hopefully there's going to be some good news coming his way soon. But uh, before that, we've got to have a chat to have. So uh, please join me in extending a very warm welcome to Bobby Thompson. How are we doing? Hello. Bobby, good evening. How are you, sir? Good day. You yourself? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. I keep trying to trim that intro down. It keeps getting longer. <laughs> um, but um, no, you thank you very much. I thought he was going to fit into 100 names then. Oh, absolutely not. No, uh, there's only some that spring to mind. Maybe, maybe one day I will. Um, <laughs> but um, no, um, Bobby, thank you for coming on. We've been trying to get, we arranged this for about a year ago, didn't we? And you were ill. And then this week I've been ill and we finally got it over the line. So thanks for coming on and having a chat. No, no, no problem at all. I'm, yeah, I'm happy to do so. Um, like it's been a since then when we we last um, organised to have a chat, a lot's happened, yeah. um, and hopefully a lot's about to happen. Yeah, exactly. There's loads of people asking me if you're going to announce it tonight, and I've just said I don't know, so I'm not going to press and probe for anything like that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's great to have you um, on for a chat, and um, we'll get cracking just very shortly. Just want to say hello to everyone um, who's tuning in. There's over 100 of you tuning in already, which is lovely. Um, guys in the comment section, uh, Matthew Clark, Lloyd Alexander, Sharon Milburn, Mick Tuck, Bert Taylor, hello Bert, uh, Sheila Kersley, hi Sheila, Ma uh, Matthew Clark, Kay Warren, uh, Toby Spooner Green, Tracy Hickley, Simon Coombs, he's the man behind your fan club on Facebook. Um, all of you guys, thank you for tuning in and everyone else. Um, if you have any uh, comments or questions, do pop them in on the live stream and we will work them in as we go. If the technology is working, we'll see them in live, uh, we'll see them in real time. So thank you everyone for uh, for tuning in. Um, right, okay. Um, this is before we get started right at the start. Um, as we've alluded to, it's it's been a pretty positive two or three weeks, hasn't it? Um, we'll get into it properly later on, but um, I guess you've enjoyed yourself in the last couple of weeks. 
Yeah, it, it's something that all come around quite fast. Um, we actually started talking to WSR fairly late in the day um, for various reasons. Um, but nonetheless, as soon as we started talking to them, we, we knew that there was something special that could happen here. Um, and to my surprise, they were fairly keen to get me on board as well. Um, so in the backlash of that, we, you know, um, long story short, I should say, um, we was able to get a test, um, which was last week. And so far it's going very well. It's working its purpose. Um, the whole purpose being help me get on the grid. Um, I was hoping that having a BMW with my name on it, go around Brands Hatch, uh, enabled us to get some excitement around it and use it for media, social media type of things um, to try and grow a bit of a buzz. And it, it looks like it's sort of working. Um, yeah, hope, hopefully it will work. Yeah, I mean, it certainly generated a buzz when it was announced you were going to do the test. Um, I think um, I think the whole BTCC world across social media, um, everyone just sort of zoned in on it and was just like, "Oh yes, come on!" Um, so, um, so it, it's 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 obviously done that. And just looking at the comments, people are asking already what's going on and all that. And we are going to come to it, folks. We're definitely going to come to it. So. Um, yeah, there's a there's a few bits to go through. I mean, people are asking how much it's costing and things like that. So, um, and how close <laughs> is it, Kevin White? What do you think, Kev? I said how how close is it? Um, I don't think we're at liberty to exactly say how close it is. Well, but... well, it's 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 close. I mean, when I talk to anyone about this, you're as close as one person's decision. Um, you know, it, it costs a lot of money for these cars to drive around and. Uh, put on a show uh, no matter where you are on the grid uh, it's also got to figure you know to make it all happen and whether that comes from parents which does with some people um, a lot of us don't have that luxury um, so there's a package we can sell to companies to people that um, you know there's packages we can make to to any to any company to make it work uh, for both parties and that's uh, what I'm doing um, so when you say how close are you, it's you, you know it's off of one person's decision. You know, you're talking to like all the drivers on the grid. You're talking to many many companies, and it only takes one of them to say yes and to be interested in what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely, and there's certainly interest there. And then there's the flip side, of course. It only takes one of them to decide to say no, and it and it can all go the other way. So. Um, yeah. I mean, it, but it sounds like it's progressing, which is good, and it sounds like it's 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 uh, getting it's it's going in the right direction, which is which is obviously the best we can hope for yeah. with the season looming soon. So um, everything crossed um, from uh, from everyone, of course. Um, and uh, I've just seen uh, what was it? We've got uh, Sharon Lynch in the comments. She's got a tenner, if it helps. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, echo yeah, that. Um, yeah, great stuff. So no, so that that's that's good to hear. Uh, with the season coming up soon, uh, um, as I said, we'll we'll touch on it a bit later. But um, what I wanted to do, and what I was hoping to do this time last year, was go back to the start, really, and um, just ask you how your interest in motorsport came about and how you first um, went about going karting. Um, it starts, uh, yeah, fairly early. My granddad uh, started on bikes, actually, on in, on speedway bikes on the ovals uh, in the seventies, I believe early doors um then had my dad and uncle who went the motocross route um so nothing to do with cars until they were, my dad was probably 18 19 um i think he was fed up with broken bones and falling off his bike and getting muddy yeah. um yeah. so then he jumped across to the oval racing scene uh where he raced for a few years uh doing all sorts of series there. there's plenty to choose from um and then jumped into cars, legend cars, uh, which were on the touring car package, um, uh, yeah, last year. And again, this year, it looks like. Uh, then then had me. Uh, and then that's how we got into karting. So I, I come from a whole family of with drivers. Um, uh, my cousin races in the pickup trucks. Uh, my uncle was still racing up until a few years ago. So, yeah, I come from a yeah, huge family of racing drivers. Yeah, it was always bound to happen, wouldn't it? It was, uh, it, it was, it was almost guaranteed to happen. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, 
<coughs> Sorry, folks, I'm a bit illness this week. Just a bit husky. Um, so obviously it was it felt inevitable when you decided to, I guess, just give it a go karting for fun to begin with. Um, when did it start getting serious? When did you start thinking, oh, I fancy competing or I, I could do something with this? Um, like, like you said, it started, started as a bit of fun. Uh, I think my dad was still a race driver in his head when, <laughs> when I was racing at eight years old. So he was caring more about himself. And then it became uh, a point where my weekends would clash with his. Uh, and he always says, you know, when, he, when he's on the grid, uh, when I was about eight years old, and he's thinking more about my racing than the race he's about to do. So that was probably when it started getting more serious for me, um, when he stopped racing himself, probably when I was about 11 years old. Um, and then we started, you know, doing the British Championship, stuff like that. Um, and, and racing with pretty much half of the touring car grid today, <laughs> just when we was eight to 15 years old. Which is, you know, which I think is sort of brilliant. I mean, as, as, as I mentioned, we've spoken to a lot of the guys on the grid uh, the last couple of years. They've all said the same thing, you know, so there, he's, some some people are racing against the people they were racing against you know like 20 you know 20 odd years ago um yeah. which which is lovely it, yeah it's really good apart from creasy obviously he's a bit old but um he's a bit older he wasn't racing against anyone 20 years yeah, ago. there's a few of them there that were uh, yeah were racing years before i was even born <laughs> yeah <laughs> so if he's tuning in um and I've, I've just had a quick look at some of the stuff that you did. You know, you've gone through, you know, the, um, was it the Bay, uh, the Bayfords, um, like uh, the Bayford Summer and, and Spring Championship, the Super One National Cadets, you came yeah. seventh, and you're in the BRDC Stars of Tomorrow Mini Max Championship. So I mean, obviously, you're you're working your way up, you know, yeah. through the ranks and everything, and getting more experience, things like that. Um, and I've got here, was it 2012? You, you took third overall in the Kart Stars Junior Max. So, you know, you're running at the front end. Yeah. You're yeah. obviously thinking at this point, oh, I'm not too bad at this, uh, this whole <laughs> racing lark. I'm, I'm sort of pretty good at it. Um, when did you first start thinking about moving into cars? And how did you go about it more, 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 um, more important, I guess? I remember the exact weekend. Uh, I remember we moved up to the senior category, which was around about 15 years old. And we was doing the first weekend of the British Championship. Um, and at that point, Fiesta Juniors just first started coming out. We couldn't afford Janetta Juniors, but we could get something together that we could do uh, Fiesta Juniors at the time. I think it was its first year. Um, and I remember us racing at a track called Pier Fire in Grantham. And uh, I remember getting hit off the track. And at that point, we, we was doing 48 weekends a year near enough in car and, and when you're not enjoying it anymore you need to move on into something else and i remember walking to my dad and saying let's, let's just move across um before it's too late even 15 sounds ridiculous doesn't it uh too late but i didn't want to be near on 20 and and trying to make the jump at that age so it's time to sort of take the leap of faith well yeah there's extra few years on your side type thing um yeah. and um, again, this is 2012. Cool, 12 years ago. Um, and obviously, you you decided to move into uh, into the Fiesta yeah. uh, Championship, and I, I guess as you as you touched on, you said you couldn't afford the Genesis, things like that. Uh, I guess that was the most affordable one that you could go and do properly at the time, rather than just sort of try and scrape bits together for races here and there. Was it was it that kind of case? Yeah, I think it was all a bit of a scrape together still. I remember being very last minute. Uh, I remember the car almost being ready the Thursday before, um, it was the Friday before, because I missed the uh, testing and, and driving out, learning how to do gears in my dad's van uh, on the way into Snetterton. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah and, seven, yeah, and just having no pressure. I, I had the mindset that it's almost starting as a novice completely again. Um, and, and that's what we done. I, I struggled on my first weekend massively. I was awful. <laughs> I was so bad. Um, but yeah, that's what it's all about. And yeah, it, 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 you know, it, you got to start somewhere with it. And uh, yeah, it, it, you know, look at the, the championship now. It's turned into something massive. Yeah, it has. It's a, it's really kind of grown in the last last few years, isn't it? And 
Um, I mean, I've got here from the research you just did a, a couple of uh, rounds uh, to begin with at the end of one season. Then 2013, you you went into a full season. Um, I I always ask this because we know um, even even more so this year um, that like funding is it's it's absolutely vital. Without it, no one can go racing, and it's harder to come by at the moment. But um, I always ask this: Was there one person that you met who? put some faith in you whether it be a company or a person or anyone like that when you started racing that really enabled you to do that first full season or anything like that because the amount of times that I hear and then I met so and so yeah um, was that the case with you or was it just a case of uh, you and your dad and everyone just getting it together definitely uh, there's been a couple uh, in each I say segment of my career um, at the start, there was a team called Vital Motorsport, uh, Gary and Kelly Rolf. Uh, they used to own the team and they helped us massively, massively to do those 48 weekends a year. And um, they helped us so much to keep us going. Um, then come out of come out of uh, karting into cars and uh, met Tony Gillum. He, he's carried me, you know, a very long way. He's given me a fantastic car for the last few years um, to get podiums and fight there on you know, that, that mid-pack to front, um, which I can't thank him enough for. Um, also meeting GKR, Neil Rosewell. He's yeah. you know, been massive for me. Without him, I would never even be able to step into a touring car. Wow, really? Because I mean, yeah. so just for those who don't know, that's the scaffolding company, isn't it? Yeah. That's the scaffold lot, yeah, um, who we've all seen on your cars and everything. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Everyone needs help, whether it be a person with, I don't know, deep pockets or just a bit of faith isn't it, it, yeah. it that, that's what people need to you know to get going racing um <clears throat> just to go into that first uh, full season uh, i guess there weren't any expectations it was a case of as you said starting as a novice uh things like that and um from the 15 races you managed to get on the podium uh, just the ones but that is for a first season first full season in cars um yeah that was quite an achievement that that must have felt great yeah, I mean, but I think the, the hardest thing for me is understanding front wheel drive. I think had I jumped out of karting into the Ginetta, being rear wheel drive, I'd just have a bit more of a natural understanding. Um, I think the front wheel drive, we didn't have a coach at the time um, or anything like that. The juniors now, you know, coaches and they're out twice a week or whatever it is. But then it, it wasn't such a thing um so we're sort of just figuring it figuring it out and trying to pick up things from other drivers and talking to people um once i understood the front wheel drive i think it was towards the end of that season that it, it all started to come together and you know i had an understanding of, of what to do but it's so alien you know from karting being on this rigid uh, chassis and the power coming from behind uh to now this thing that feels a bit floaty and wallowy and you're, you're sitting a lot higher and the power's coming from in front of you it feels completely different Wow. And that's things like that's things that non racers like me, um, you know, we've only driven road cars and the odd go kart here and there. Uh, we that's the thing, it's such a big shift, isn't it? And like, again, we'll come to it later on. Um, and the difference in how you drive a front wheel powered yeah. car to a rear wheel one, which we'll come to shortly. Um, one thing I do want to touch on though, um, after that first full season in 2013, obviously it's gone pretty well, you did. A handful of rounds um, in uh, form, Formula Ford, so back to the rear wheel drive. Yeah. Um, how did all that come about? I mean, I've gotten you know, you were in as a guest driver and things like that. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, that that having gone from karts into the Fiestas and then a little sidestep in, into Formula Ford, how did it all come about? Uh, yeah, I think it was there's a there's a team called Meridian. Um, and we got a call literally the, the Monday or the Tuesday before a race weekend. Um, and I'm sure it was Ash Sutton that, that was changing team. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, we didn't have to bring much budget. Um, so it was a big family pulled together um, to, to, to bring that budget for two weekends, Donington and, and Fruxton. And, and Donington was just getting my eye in and understanding it all, you know, just taking it all in for first time on the Tocker weekend is massive. Just understanding how the weekend is, is enough. Uh, and then, yeah, Fruxton, we done uh, a little better and had a fantastic weekend. Yeah, it was, it was an eye opener, um, but really enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, were there any 
plans to take it any further if you could were, were you ever thinking oh the single seater route might 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 be a bit of fun or were you still fairly set on the old tin tops yeah touring car all the way um you know just, the numbers for the single seater stuff is insane absolutely it, insane yeah so, absolutely yeah. I, I can imagine in it, it's pretty huge now well it's it, it's like colossal now isn't it it's, um, yeah. you know, some of the figures that are going around even for like british f4 you know on the top of package um yeah yeah probably uh certainly for the bank balance it's certainly uh, <laughs> a, uh, a better shout um so um yeah i mean i i guess the eyes were always on the btcc and uh said and at the end of 2014 um was it then that you linked up with tony and team hard properly in the was it the vw yeah Can't yeah, so I think we had the rest of that out so long ago now. I can't remember. <laughs> so, uh, we, we had, I'm sure we had the rest of that that year out, which felt like a long time. I remember it feeling like I had a whole year out. Um, was looking at what sort of series to do um, that that could put you in some sort of limelight or some sort of you know, it had some sort of backing. It was a fairly big series uh, that we could find sponsorship for. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so one way or another, we got involved with Tony and the VW Cup, which at the time was uh, a, a, a fairly big series. Um, it was like a baby touring car series. You could choose any VW within the last three years, and it was all right. and you had success ballast. And yeah, it was, it was a really good series when we first joined. For the three years, I'd done it actually. And uh, yeah, I think that there is when really you were a different class of driver to I was in the Fiesta. Um, right, and just up. being around some of the other drivers there, you learn so much. Um, and yeah, it, it, I really enjoyed the three years we had there, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess I mean, you said you didn't have any expectations going into the uh, into the season in the Fiestas. Obviously, the single seat route wasn't for you. Did you? I mean, given that you'd had the podium in the Fiestas and you'd made the improvement and the and the and the progress and the, and the development that you had made, yeah. um, did you have any? Um, expectations going into that first season in in the vws or was it again it's another car to learn and it's another series to learn or were you thinking i i really want to go and do something in this first year yeah i think after our first half a year again was just getting learning and, and just learning some tracks i haven't been to um and then the second half i think it really came together uh, i think we had a couple of podiums and yeah um it went really well i think we had a good spa as well um because the the series used to follow the british gt so it was a fairly big weekend which is quite enjoyable um and then that then was it when i was completely set on british touring car yeah absolutely i mean you mentioned it there just to sort of elaborate on that i mean we all know that the spa i mean every driver that's ever raced there has said it's a fantastic experience every driver who hasn't raced there wants to race there um yeah. it's your second full season in car racing and all of a sudden you're thumping in a you know you're thumping around spa in a in a in a pretty souped up uh, volkswagen golf um yeah. what was that like? i mean obviously it it was a whole learning curve on all the circuits for the car and everything but when you got to spa what did you think i mean when you got there when you got on track i mean well i we, just got an image of a, of a new driver getting in there and just smiling the whole way around in his home <laughs> yeah well the well in a, on a uk circuit say brands hatch indy um not much runoff in places very tight like Alton park the vw felt really fast <laughs> you get to spa you know <laughs> it felt it's so like, fast this, this fast car yeah. felt yeah quite flat actually um the place is made for a thousand horsepower so um yeah it was, it was just a matter of um caring about momentum and uh yeah and the toe was absolutely huge i remember and uh yeah it was uh it was a it was just a great experience you know my first away weekend you know we'll call it um in car racing and to do it at spa was great yeah absolutely fantastic experience um yeah still a place on the bucket list um just in a comment from alfie schofield uh are the cars all electric they are not all electric at the moment alfie but um they may go that way in future they are uh, hybrid in the btcc um so uh yeah i mean 
Uh, as you said, you, you've got those two podiums, the experience of Spa. I've got here, you had your first win in cars. Tenth overall. Um, pretty happy with that? Uh, I, 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 I'm more focused on the second half of the year, really, on that. Um, the, the championship wasn't my main focus straight away in that year. Uh, it, yeah, it was more, let's get some podiums in, get some fastest laps, understand it. Um and then it was for year two and three. Now it's operation. Try and get yourself into touring car. Yeah, it was really kick on. You know, use the experience that you've got, and obviously that takes you into twenty sixteen. Obviously, you're you're back in the same series, same team. Nice bit of continuity for the first time. Um, uh, you stood on the podium in half the races, seven of the fourteen, fifth overall. I mean, from tenth to fifth, that's a big jump. That's got to be a confidence boost again on that on that BTCC ladder, isn't it? Yeah, that was with power max racing um okay. and that was with um we was bringing a new car into the series a polo um good car we struggled with some things that we missed out uh, compared to the golf and the shortcut um but all around a good car and uh, i think it was really good in the dry we just struggled in wet races so um but yeah real that that, that year really taught me a lot engineering wise um uh, Everyone that was working on the touring car side was working with me. Um, so that taught me a lot yeah, from an engineering standpoint. Um, but we just quite didn't do it. It was, it was a, cl- cl- a very close year, that one, actually. Yeah, I, I, again, from looking at the, uh, <clears throat> yeah, from the results and the standings, I mean, you finished fifth, but the top six or seven were were split by cigarette paper. I mean, it, 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 was, it was super tight, wasn't it? Um, must have been nice to be in a in a in a title battle as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, running at the front end. Yeah, um, just quickly, guys. I I am seeing all the questions in the comments. I will work the <laughs> questions in. Um, so twenty seventeen, um, a breakout year. Um, were there any sort of major changes that you made to the, you know, to the setup or to your approach or to your driving style or was it just the culmination of all the bits that you'd learned over those first two years um i, I think I'd, I'd learned the championship learned the car uh, and how to drive it um that was the first year we had g car scaffolding on board uh, so i knew i had to perform to be able to keep them um yeah and that year we had a brand new car um a golf uh courtesy of team hard which uh yeah it, it was fast from the get-go really um and then a lot of it was damage limitation really from from the start of the year um again another close battle i think it was uh there's two other drivers with myself that are all fighting all year for it so yeah real tough year um but yeah again i, I knew now it, when you when you have that sponsor for the first year, you, I knew I had to perform to be able to make the step onto the Tocker weekend, whether that's a touring car or Porsche or whatever you do. Yeah, sure, sure. And I mean that 2017 season. I mean, I've got you know it couldn't have gone too much better. I mean, I've got here that you took six wins from 14 races. From those 14 races, you're on the podium on 10 of them, three poles, nine fastest. You know. As seasons go, pretty good. Um, yeah. Is there anything um, that kind of stands out from that season? Was there one sort of, was there like a battle or even a mishap or anything else like that that really sort of <laughs> in your mind? Yeah. I guess the yeah. mishap do. We, 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 we can leave those if you like. <laughs> no, no, I've got, do you know what? I, I can't remember much, which is unfortunate because I wish I could remember more. I've got a load of pictures somewhere. Um, but I remember leading... <laughs> I remember leading a race at Alton Park by six, seven seconds and throwing it off on my own. It's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. Oh. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, where, uh, where, whereabouts was it on the circuit? Where was it? Do you remember? Um, at the uh, Nickerbrook uh, chicane on the exit, the easiest place for front wheel drive. Right. Um, oh. There's too much curb on the exit and we were bouncing across the track and yeah most embarrassing thing i've done oh dear no no you did folks don't 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 youtube it there's no need no (laughs) 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 but (laughs) but all was well that ended well i mean you ended up um uh you ended up 
um, you know, winning the championship, your first uh, championship in car racing. Um, and obviously with what was at stake with the sponsors and wanting to get onto the Taco package, um, obviously you must have been delighted, but was it a bit of relief in there as well? Yeah, the relief that, that we won the championship massively. Um, the second half of that year was, you know, quite nerve wracking at times and just trying to keep on top. Um, I knew I wanted to go onto the Tucker package, um, but we at the time that winter we didn't know if it was touring car or a support series. Um, okay. I think looking back at it now, I would like to have done at least a year learning the weekend rather than jumping straight into touring car, which sounds silly because if you've got the opportunity, take it. But I, I, would, I wish I'd done a year looking at a support series like uh, I think it was Clio's at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or Jeanette Super Cup, I think it was at the time as well. Uh, and just, yeah, learn the weekend. Um, there were some tracks on there I hadn't been to. So Croft I hadn't been to uh, and Knock Hill. So, uh, yeah, I just wish I, I'd have done that. And then I think I would have been a little bit more prepared to go for 2019. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, were there any discussions with any teams or were you ever sort of really looking at it in depth as going into the uh, into, into any of the support series or was it a case of there was an opportunity to go BTCC and felt like you had to take it? Or what Yeah, was the... there was an opportunity and we felt like we had to take it. Um, and... <laughs> I feel like at the year I'd done it, uh, the, it's hard to say. The, the, I, you know, I didn't know much about the business side of the BTCC. And in my mindset, I thought you just come in and you can be fairly fast and work with your team to be quicker, which does work in some respect. But I wish I knew more about the cars at the time. wish I knew a little bit more engineering wise in terms of BTCC now might have waited a little longer still come in with team hard in 2019 but I wish I'd have waited a year longer yeah sure sure um just before we get into the bones of the BTCC because I know that's what everyone wants to talk about um I'm going to keep you waiting just for two minutes um you mentioned about um about learning the weekend the British Touring Car Championship weekend um for those who perhaps haven't been in the paddock or around the, the pits or anything or even done or even done the pit walk uh that uh, that is on every weekend um and certainly this is something that i've found out in the last few years even though i was aware of it being a hectic weekend for for everyone on a btcc weekend is there's so much going on for a driver isn't there there's the hospitality there's the media there's the sponsors there's talking to everything there's talking with the crew and the team and everything else Every single driver from the package that I've spoken to, they said their first season in the BTCC paddock was a real eye opener, which yeah. obviously you've alluded to. Just how crazy is a BTCC weekend? Even if you're not in the main event, even if you're saying in the minis and things like that, it is just just how crazy is it? Um, it's insane. Uh, it's so the on track stuff is fairly hard work. I mean, in, within cars to drive. They're not that you know. They're not like some of these single seat cars where the guys, you know, um, find them very hard to to even complete a race distance, and they get out hurting almost. Um, but those free races take it a lot out of you mentally as well. Uh, even on the Saturdays, free times in car, and you know that those test sessions, uh, FP1, FP2, you know, we'll make five to eight to ten changes per session if if we've got time. And just filing through that stuff because you, you haven't got much track time so you're trying to get through as much as you can so you've got the best car going to qualify them. and it's only trial and error that can work that stuff out um the out of car stuff is difficult um i found myself get a lot lot better uh in car and out of car if i focus uh on the stuff that i care about um still fit the other things in like talking to fans doing the hospitality bit the sponsor bit the schmoozing and all the rest of it um yeah. but i found myself to go a lot lot better when i don't come out that engineering room all day um, right i almost become obsessed with it probably too obsessed um thing. And, and, well, and, and the more and more I've, i do it the more and more i care about it each year uh, uh probably, probably more than care more i get obsessed with it and i can't get it out of my head even when i try and go to bed on that saturday night 
my, my other half would tell you that I, I'm laying in bed talking to her about <laughs> setups and she don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, um, but, but like the whole brain's going and you're buzzing with yeah. it all. And... Yeah. Yeah, every, both uh, the two engineers I've had and would tell you that um, I was still texting them and calling them at you know, 10 o'clock at night asking if this was the right thing or that was the wrong thing, So, which I didn't do in my first two years of touring cars. So, so going back to what we were saying before about learning the weekend, um, that's a sign of it that I wasn't too – well, I didn't know much about it. Um, I thought I was doing what I was meant, meant to be doing, but it's nowhere near enough. Um, the last two years has completely changed. Wow. I mean, yeah. that's the bit that sort of we don't see. Obviously, a lot of the fans um, and people that follow the series, they'll be at the circuit and they'll see all the, um, I guess, the motorhomes, you know, the, you know, the, guy, you know, the guys like yourself. And I know, come back to Michael Kreese has got one and Aaron Taylor Smith needs one because he lives on the other side of the world. <laughs> um, and people just think oh yeah they go back to these nice comfy beds and have a lie down and get a nice sleep and things like that but it's not the case is it i mean the, the driver's mind is always going it's how can we get the extra out of it and yeah. that must be exhausting in itself um, yeah yeah i mean uh if, if we get a good car on a saturday uh, i remember there's been a couple of weekends where we've got a car that all saturday i've been in the top five top four um i think we had that uh, fruxton a fairly good car Alton park i think most of the rounds uh, a bar Snetterton, we struggled at Snet last year, but we, most of the rounds we had a car that we were happily in the top five to top six, which I think with the, the equipment we had was bloody good. Um, so that those nights were made a little bit easier um, because you're just asking for something different when we go to a, you know uh, the races, uh, and, and we just talk about a few bits like that, but. When you uh, had a weekend and you've got a race on your hands on Sunday, yeah, those Saturday nights for me, um, yeah, it's hard work. Yeah, it's a long Saturday evening. Yeah, it's it's not the Saturday evening we used to have. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, just to sort of backtrack, I mean, your first, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Alfie Scarfield, who's creasy back in touring cars? Not at the moment, Alfie, he is not at the moment. I spoke to him recently. Um, nothing sorted as yet. Um, so yeah, BTCC, you've made the step up uh, with um, uh, Team Hard and with like, Tony Gillam. Um, I mean, I guess commercially, it's well to sponsors and backers and things like that because of the TV and the corporate and all that kind of thing. Especially with what uh, Team Hard do on the court on the um, on the hospitality side, which everyone knows um, is uh, very, very, very popular. Um, but when you got in the car, what were your first thoughts? Because it, it was the Volkswagen, wasn't it? The you know, uh, it was a VWCC was the first touring car you drove. Um, how different was it having gone from the little hot hatch to the uh, you know to the big brother? Um, damping it was completely different, but everything else it was still a race car. You, you I got my head around it fairly fast. Um, they made some changes the winter before I got to the car that uh, were a bit risky. Um, we were well, caught them risky now. At the time, you think, you know, this is this is the winning idea. And it seemed to didn't go the right way. And that's why if you followed the VW um, CC for a few years, it was OK. It was, you know, when it first came around, it was getting wins with uh, Plato, Aaron Taylor-Smith doing really well in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can't remember who else who drove it, but um, I think Colin drove it, didn't they? I think Colin yeah, was in there. Yeah. 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 Um, so, and then it started to struggle. Uh, it was got in the top ten the year before I got there. It was, I think, it had a couple of races in the top five with Jake Hill in it. Uh, and then that those two years, it, it started to drop. And uh, yeah, made a change within the car that just seems not work, and we couldn't quite find it. And at this point. Other teams were uh, building new cars and, and getting more modern stuff. And, uh, yeah, it quite outdated itself fairly fast those two years. Um, but it got me in there, got got my head around how the touring car works. Um, so I've got to be grateful for that, haven't I? Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Um, I mean, I, I guess when you first went in, you didn't, again, it comes back to the old question of having expectations and stuff. Um, obviously, every racer wants to go out and be competitive straight off the bat i guess you kind of knew that wasn't going to be necessarily the case straight away but did you have any 
Any um, aspirations for the season? I mean, I guess like the Jack Sears Trophy would would uh, would would always be high on the list for anyone coming into the series. Um, or were you just thinking, right, let's just make some progress this year with the car? Yeah. Was, was that the, the, the thought process? Yeah, the first year was just, um, yeah, progress of the car, learn off the teammates and engineers, really. Um, it was a complete, it, it was a big step up. Um, the second year, I had a bit more of an idea of what to do. Um, uh, but I think we, car-wise, uh, we was in a bit of a, a circle, we, you know, we were stuck. No matter what we threw at the car, we, we couldn't drive. We, were, you know, I remember one weekend uh, on the second year of the car, um, it was me and Jack Goff. He went completely one way of the car. I went the other and no different at all. So we knew that oh, right. we were stuck with that, yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those things with, with whatever you do with it. Um, you know, you're on to whatever you're on to. Um, and yeah. again, I mean, I just want to touch on, you know, that first season. I mean, you took 20th on your first uh, race, which is, you know, absolutely nothing to be, uh, nothing to be snapped at all. Um, I've always wondered this. I, I spoke with uh, Fiona Leggett, who raced 15, 20 odd years ago, and she just sort of did racing for fun and then found herself on the BTCC grid and said she was almost crying because she was so nervous on the grid the first time she was shaking, looking around, seeing all these people that she'd look at, uh, that she'd looked up to. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to ask if you were crying, but um, <laughs> how did you feel sitting on that first ever BTCC grid in the car? Did, did, did you think, did a part of you think, what am I doing here? Or was it just like, this is awesome, I'm here? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. It, it was, the, you know, don't get me wrong, the first year, it was definitely a, a shock to the system. Um, and, you know, I'm not too sure when that quite went away. Um, but it does. Here they become a, a name in the window. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, it does go away. Um, but, yeah, definitely that first year. I think that's the same with any driver, right? And everyone there is there because it was their dream to be there. Um yeah. So you know, they're, they're, and when you join, there's already drivers that have already been uh, in the in the series for years. So yeah. yeah, of course you look up to some of them. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember speaking to Matt Neal on here so two or three years ago, and he was saying uh, his first race, he was about ninth or tenth or something, and, and he'd had some success. And obviously, you know, he knew what you know, like Steve, his father, had been a racer, and he said he was going down the back straight at Snetterton. And his thigh and his leg were twitching because he was so nervous. He was so, and he said, "Yeah." Um, so, as as you say, any driver gets that. And obviously, Matt went on to do quite well, didn't he? So, um, yeah, not too bad. Um, but yeah, the, the first season, yeah, it was like a steady first half of the season. Uh, Isham Alton Park aside, um, first points at Snetterton in the first season um, must have been good to get the first points on the board. That must have been like the first little win, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, it was just getting points and yeah, yeah. At the start of the year, like I say, it was, I was thinking it was going to be um, a lot more points coming in, but um, yeah, you soon realise that this is very, very hard, um, and it's getting those points were massive for us. Good. And then I've got what well, the very next round. You took a top ten in the very next race, which again is another little step forward. You got the points. You got the top ten. It's it's things to uh, uh, things to build on. Um, so was it twenty? Uh, was it nineteen? I can't remember. Um, yeah, when you were alongside, um, you know, you also Creasy and Jack Goff, Carl Bordy, things like that. Um, it just seemed to be another, you know, lots lots of progression that year. Um, was it they were like 13th and 13th and 15th in the opening rounds and things like that and um i mean when you go into the series it's all about progress um in that first season uh you had a really good teammate you mentioned him earlier on jack goff i just want to talk about jack because he's also driven for west surrey racing who you've had the test with recently um there's a lot of people would love to see him back on the grid, but he's another guy who sort of felt the pinch of the finances and things and the sponsorship and things like that. It just goes to show that you can't, unfortunately, get there on ability alone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, he, uh, yeah, maybe because he's had a baby as well. <laughs> I might change a few I mean, that, things. That, that's a big, <laughs> big thing, isn't it? Just yeah. recently. And huge congratulations to Jack um, yeah. for that. Yeah, but, this, um, 
the the business side of touring car is is something that you don't necessarily see so much on social media and not no drivers talk about it because a lot of it's fairly private so it's quite difficult and i can understand the frustration from the fan side looking in um you know i'm not understanding why someone like jack Goff isn't on the grid but it, it's it's so difficult to make happen um and the trouble is if you if you leave the grid to get back in it, it, huffy's come back and he's done yeah well to do so but it's so it's so difficult to get back in i mean and it, i mean i caught up with uh, rob up at snetters and um he said that um, he's glad that he was he had the opportunity to because it's it's been twenty years since his last full season, isn't it? And he said that he's very glad that he's had the opportunity to go out and and make some money elsewhere because now he can come back and put yeah, some of the money yeah. back into back into this other 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 otherwise he wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> But, um, but that, that, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, there's so much that goes into getting a seat, and obviously, you know, Jack's got other things going on. But um, yeah, he's such a good driver, and and there's a lot that fall into that bracket. But this is why we've got to give a huge respect to anyone who gets themselves onto the grid. You know, um, you know, however, however their backing comes. So yeah, hopefully, we'll be back soon. But um, but yeah, back to you. Um, obviously, you've had your first season, 2019. Um, you switched to trade prize cars racing with um, obviously Dan Kirby, who's very, very, very sadly no longer with us. Um, you yeah, know, obviously condolences still go to his family um, and everyone who knows him. Um, how did that move? Um, and was it just another opportunity to uh, to make some progress in the BTC? Um, so trade price cars sponsored uh the year before the vw uh team hard um we got i got on very well with dan um and his team um so the crossover came when he bought the aldis and wanted to have a go himself um at running the team and and i think he thought that he would get more exposure that way for his business rather than sponsoring another team and i think every bloke wants to have a crack at running their own team one day yeah you know? it's, it's everyone's dream <laughs> yeah. um, so he went and done it with, with a good team of guys and, and backed by amd um and yeah he, he gave me a call um jake moved on to i uh, was still with amd i remember actually i said yeah it? yeah um, so there was an opening for me and Jiggy, um, so we went for it. Um, the COVID year, so no fans. Um, yeah, that was like, going to be the next bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, good, good car. Really, really good car. Um, I think we struggled that year not having the soft tire. That was the year where uh, all, they didn't have an option tire, which I think those cars that are a little bit older than. Uh, say at that time you had the new free series was out then um i think they bought a new honda out around then so yeah you was just in an older car where these ones these newer cars could uh a bit more advanced so at races we looking at the data we had from jake from 2018 or 2019 sorry yeah um yeah we we could have really done with a soft tire some races um but yeah, a mega year until until it all all stopped. Yeah, um, I mean, just to, I mean, we'll get onto what you just alluded to there. But um, again, I've asked this to a lot of drivers. Um, was there a danger that obviously we didn't know in twenty twenty if there was going to be a season? What the you know because the world was turned upside down for you know for you know for some people more than others, of course. Um, with COVID, was there a danger that you weren't going to have um, you know, that like maybe your backers weren't going to stick around or things like that because the big part of it is the corporate side and what you can offer your sponsors. That obviously wasn't an issue in 2020. Nobody was allowed there. Was there a danger that you weren't going to be on the grid uh, at all or was or were you lucky to have your sponsors stay loyal? I was very lucky. Yeah, I, I'd say I was in danger and I was very lucky. <laughs> Both. Every sponsored, sponsor had... Uh, phoned up and we'd phone them to make sure everything's okay. No one was happy. Um, was the exact thing they're paying in for, uh, for some of them, wasn't there. Um, hospitality, everything. Yeah. Um, so it made it really difficult. And you just needed that whole year from everyone. And I think every team up and down the grid, you just had to 
everyone had had to understand everyone else's situation really um, yeah from the guys running the championship to sponsors to drivers it was yeah it was a tough year um i was just happy that we got out of the house and was able to go racing <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I, and, and I guess when the green light came and said, yeah, we're going racing, must have been a huge relief, um, you know, so just for all of you on, you know, as as racers. Um, just seen Andy Hopley, um, uh, Hoppers from Hoppers Motorsport Blogs. He said um, it was a strange year for everyone, of course, but how was it racing without the fans? Because I, th I think the fans felt weird not being able to go. Yeah. But how different a dynamic was it with it essentially being empty? Yeah. <laughs> it must have felt very odd. Yeah, it's completely weird. It's like a big club meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, yeah, it was. It's very quiet. Um, yeah, very quiet. I, I mean, I, it, everything happened a lot quicker. Um, it wasn't thousands of people to wade through when you, uh, you know, arrived to the circuit and people were setting up their pictures for the day. And yeah, yeah it was it was fairly uh, fairly quiet and. Uh, and there yeah, weren't people like me coming up yeah. to you asking for interviews. <laughs> no, it was, no, it was very, yeah. it was, that was a little bit uh, quieter, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just, you know, getting to the bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, to the on-track bit. Um, you took 11th straight off the bat at Donington, um, 14th and 12th at Brand, so on the fringe of the top 10, uh, something similar at Alton, 13th and 12th at Silverstone. So, I mean, it shows the you know, progression both in you and in the car. Um, and you were leading the Jack Sears Trophy, which, again, I guess was the was was a target for the year. Yeah. Um, and then Croft happened. Um, obviously, I, I don't like talking about this kind of a thing. Um, but um, as I said, as you alluded to before, it all came to a fairly shuddering halt. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't have any memories of the the accident because it was a huge one, wasn't it? Um, I mean, what do you remember about it? Uh, I remember screenshots of it. Um, yeah, it, I, th I think it, I sent you some screenshots at some point. Yeah. <laughs> you sent me a message saying, "Oh, have you got any?" <laughs> Maybe those are the only ones I remember. Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, like yeah I, I just remember um, racing with Proctor. Um, and typical touring car racing around a tight track with on wet grass the only downside is at croft there's a farmer's field in the middle of the track which when you say that that's pretty insane um God, yeah, and yeah it, it, i just went in at the wrong angle um if, if i went in straight on um i probably would have had a lot of damage but i would have made the next round yeah uh i went in sideways and actually there was probably a foot drop into this into this um uh farmer's field graded area and yeah it, just, it went over um yeah but yeah yeah and i think we all saw what happened thereafter and um i hope you i mean i hope you don't mind me saying when, when you got out of the car you didn't look well um for obvious reasons um mm. i hope you don't mind me i mean and i think a lot of people were looking at it thinking he's really given himself a shake up there and that was the case wasn't it because you it, it was a pretty severe concussion wasn't it you suffered yeah yeah i i think when i got out of the car adrenaline just carries you it's not until i got back to the medical center that you you <laughs> it, you settle down and, and things start to happen when i got out of the car i was just gutted because we uh, I had a, an engineer called Chaz Cleland who is uh, he still is a fantastic engineer he's moved over to the GT world now and we just found something with the car um, that weekend that thing was on absolute rails I think we had some decent ra um, finishes if I remember rightly that weekend and, and you came eighth twice I've got here so you yeah. ran into the top ten yeah I was really happy with the car and uh, yeah I was excited when I got out of the car about <laughs> You know, I knew there and then this would be game over. Um, no, right. Yeah, to the end of that season, just being COVID year and, um, yeah, finding sponsors at any time to hard, hard as it is to finish off that year is, is very difficult. Yeah, certainly, obviously, with the way the world was and, you know, the state the car was in, because obviously that was wrecked, wasn't it? Um, um, and obviously... I mean, you said that it, it was probably game over finances wise. It was, I guess it was another blow when you were told that you medically 
couldn't race or certainly shouldn't race that must have you know knowing you were going to be out of the car for x amount of time a time scale that you didn't know as well um yeah. that must have been especially tough again with the way the world it was as well yeah um at the start of that year actually we uh there was a, a program within the, the touring car called rescue racer i believe where um there they were doing scans on drivers heads um and brain sc scans and and tests i believe i can't quite remember now uh but we're doing sort of eye tests and things like that to uh, to see if if a driver had an accident if there was a difference when they retake the test they knew something's not quite right and they had to be taken to hospital um so you know i was very lucky that that year that was brought in um and i was there sort of guinea pig for that uh, for the rest of the year so we was up at uh, Aidenbrook's hospital uh, every week twice a week for scans and yeah it's, it's just part of the parcel really isn't it <laughs> um yeah I, I just as soon as I felt better I just wanted to go racing um and towards the end of that year um I was coaching a driver a lot of my work is coaching other drivers and uh, I was sitting next to a young lad and we we pulled out the pits and done half a lap and this was near on six months later and yeah i had to leave straight away it it, it really wasn't right so it, yeah it was amazing to actually see that i felt completely fine but wasn't quite ready to go i mean um straight away from the crash it, um phone light anything like that would really hurt my head so um yeah it is a weird experience yeah absolutely and i guess it's the kind of thing that's just best left to heal on its own and you know yeah. just just to level off a bit um but it just goes show that you know um you know we see it in all sports now head um head head injuries are treated so 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 seriously and that's exactly yeah. why isn't it because because it can cause a huge <clears throat> excuse me it can cause a huge knock-on effect um obviously 2021 daft question i mean there was no question of the btcc because of you know the reasons you've just said but um you did it i think it was uh where was it it was touched on in the comments just gonna scroll up here uh thomas parker even thomas he said um you got back into the mini challenge uh for a few rounds in 21 he was at donnington i was at that one i think that was my yeah. second second round back um you said that uh, said that you did really well in the championship which we uh, sorry in the minis which we all saw um was that always going to be a stopgap was it always going to be a case of right get back behind the wheel when you're ready get get your eye back in and go again yeah uh i wanted to do something that year um i spent the whole year you know i told myself we have a year off um really push the coaching side of my you know little business that i do and and see if we can get good mac customers in um and i had a couple of customers that were happy to pay for me uh, uh, and getting behind the uh, I mean the challenge car uh, with Jamspot, uh, who I also work with. Um, so yeah, it all sort of come together. The last two rounds were coming around the corner. Uh, they had a car, so so we give it a go. Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed to get back in. Um, we had some breakdown issues um, yeah. that hurt our pace, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I loved it. Yeah, it was great to see. And as, as I said, I was at uh, Donington at the weekend. I think it was the September time towards the end of the season. And no disrespect to any of the mini challenge drivers because there's very, very good young drivers in there and very, very talented. Um, but I don't think you'd qualified particularly well or you had an issue or something. You were towards the back and you were just like scything your way through. And it was like, yeah, that's Bobby Thompson. <laughs> you can sort of tell it was, yeah, yeah it was a, just a little different level of... Uh, uh, caliber of driver but it was great to see you back um and obviously that set up 2022 um back with uh team hard in the uh cupra now um obviously i think they'd had the car uh was it i think it was in 21 they had the cupra i think yeah um and you, and obviously with it being a new car that to the series that had been bedded in for a year was was that another big kind of draw um, um the fact that it was it was more um well not 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 so old machinery <laughs> yeah well I, at the start of that year i was adamant that i wasn't going to race <laughs> i didn't want to i wanted to focus on working and and seeing if i could do something that side 
Um, my thought process was if I'm not able to bring in a huge amount of sponsorship, it's very hard to go and do well at any form of motorsport. So um, we kept looking, but unless I didn't get it, I wasn't going to do it. Um, and then we got brought in to do uh, some damper testing for Team Hard at Brands Hatch. Yeah. Um, and we was working through some bits and uh, we, I think it was just us at the track. It was hardly anyone there and it went really well really really well we, um and then then i got the bug and as soon as i saw the cupra and how hard the team had worked on it and uh how the guys have been developing it from the years prior i, I knew that yeah i had to have a crack at this yeah absolutely and obviously you still had uh, you know uh, you still had your main sort of like sponsors still involved with you that stuck with you through through the recovery and everything um just speaking of the recovery thomas parker said that you were the talk of the marshalling community at Croft on the weekend of 2020 with a lot of people concerned and everyone was very relieved uh, when I saw the year okay which which I think everyone uh, can get on board with um but yeah and so you've gone back in you got your sponsors back in um so we'll talk about the new hybrid system because obviously you've driven a few uh, you know you've driven sort of 40 50 60 odd races in the touring cars by this point and then the hybrid comes in did that take a bit of getting used to funny enough no um no okay no i i for for us it was uh carrying a bit more weight felt a bit different um you know how much of those batteries 70 odd kg or something like that i think Pretty um, yeah it's quite a lot um but no i for me it was it's just a button you gotta press when i see a blue <laughs> when i see a blue light um i know this year they're going to get a lot more boost when they press that button yeah. um but then it it didn't feel much in the first year or last year you know it felt like just taking some weight off your shoulders you you, you uh use it straight as you need it don't get me wrong it definitely helps um but i think all in our head we wanted this button that pushed my head to the back of the seat like fast and furious and it wasn't quite that uh, i like it I, I like the barry i know it's got some some opinions on it over the last few years i love it i think it's something quite cool i think it's going to be really cool this year with the added boost um but yeah it, it it was a it was a different aspect um you know we, we used to in the, from a driving standpoint we used to talk in the whole lap um to to engineers i'm quite talkative um i have a full-on chat and a cup of tea like we've had tonight while i was driving around to my engineer um so yeah having another button to press you know a couple of times a lap's not too bad i think it was probably harder work for the engineers and data engineers to figure out exactly when's the best to deploy um to to the millisecond really yeah absolutely and, and I, I think you're right i mean just from the outside looking in it feels like it's going to have more of an effect this year um a bit more like the uh the like push to pass they use in indie that kind of thing just give it a, a proper squirt rather than a bit of a yeah you know, like a low feed in that it was before but um yeah yeah no it, it should be good to see um that first round though in the uh, Cooper 2022 and you took uh, point scoring finishes in the first round so straight off the bat in a new car uh, you're straight into the points and uh, still on it um the reverse grid at Brand I can't remember what it was you had the reverse grid um and you uh, you got the front row start um you 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 had a front row start before that hadn't worked out it had not worked out uh happily at brands before but um when you're sitting on the front row of a btcc grid if it feels like a bit of a silly question um but is it a different feeling to when you're say even on the fourth or fifth row you've got the clear track apart from that fella just there <laughs> um oh completely yeah I, it, it is nerve-wracking um i think i i've explained this before uh so sorry if i repeat myself to some people know, but different. you where where we were an underfunded team compared to most of the grid. Um, I feel like we could get decent Saturdays um, and just put that one lap in and put all our engineering heads together to produce a lap. But on Sundays, even when I had maybe a top five pace car, I knew that I had three, four laps in us. And then it was the whole race in the mirrors trying to keep this, <laughs> keep this thing alive. Um, so that's what my brain's thinking. I know I have a couple of laps in me to, to attack, but um, at that stage, we we had a, a car that, that couldn't quite compete on lap 
six, seven to 12, you know? Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's what I think when I'm on the grid. The actual getaway, um, I've had some awful ones. I've had some good ones. Um, I wish it wasn't so much luck of the draw like that. Um, but unfortunately, it is. <laughs> Yeah, sure, sure. Um, and as I alluded, to, as I alluded to before, you'd had a front row start, and the whole race just unraveled pretty much from the start, and it wasn't really anything anything to do with you. Um, second time round, though, it went a bit better, and I mean, you said it was full defence, basically, just because of the, the car and the way, and, and and like who who was around you. Um, the relief when you got to the <laughs> when you got to the finish line and you're on the podium for the first time ever in the BTCC, yeah. that must have felt absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it was a massive weight off the shoulders. I mean, for us at Team Hard, it doesn't come often getting on the podium, and uh, like I say, underfunded. Um, so every penny went on making that happen. Um, so yeah, it. it yeah, it meant it was like a win, really. And uh, I think the team looked at it that way. Um, and I think we have really getting somewhere with that Cooper from, from the get-go. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. it seemed like you hit the ground running with it and obviously, you know, to get that podium as well. Um, so the rest of the season was pretty consistent. You were in or just outside the top 10 in pretty much every race. Um, and you clinched the Jaxxers trophy, which, again, was probably the aim at the start of the season. Um, must have been nice to, you know, to get your hands on that. Yeah, um, that was our focus. I mean, for, I, I didn't quite realise from a commercial side how big of a deal the Jaxxers was. Uh, right. As a driver, you naturally just want to be win, 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 win. But uh, commercially and within the championship, Jax's um, trophy is, is absolutely huge. So from the start of that year, that was our main focus, is Jax's wins. And, and towards the end of that year, there was points where, you know, I wasn't battling, even if I was, you know, top five, top six, I, I wouldn't fight someone as hard because I know my main focus was Jax's to get that, to get that nailed in. Yeah, absolutely. And, it was job done, obviously. Um, and obviously, having got that podium at Brands meant you couldn't go for it again. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it, it was the last chance, so it was good to uh, yeah. good to have got that. And that sort of runs into 2023. Now, last year, it, it was a tricky year for a lot of people across the grid just because of the way the world is with financing yeah. and the money and there was drivers moving around and dropping out and coming back and all that kind of a thing, uh, of which you were one of them and i guess it all started apart from the illness around media day which obviously put paid to getting out on track and put paid to our first chat and everything else like that um apart from that illness was it all as comfortable as it could have been going in into a season having had the year that was before the jackson's trophy win and all the commercial stuff that you touched on um we got as a team very lucky very fast um Unlucky for Team Dynamics, they <laughs> uh, stopped uh, with the touring car program, yeah. so uh, we was able to grab, um, you know, their guys, their engineers, Barry being one of them, who was my engineer. Um, we didn't. My car wasn't built almost until the Tuesday before the first race. Um, wow! So went to a couple of pre-season tests, and I was sitting around watching my teammates drive whilst I was uh, waiting for my car to get built. But I felt confident. Um, in terms of track time, I didn't feel like I needed anything. I felt ready to go. Uh, there was just a few things I wanted to do setup-wise with Barry just and get to know an engineer as well because it was the first time I've ever met Barry. Um, so from that side, I was completely fine. Um, but it was very late in the day, so I knew if we was going to have any teething problems with the car, which naturally happened, um, unfortunately, it would have been on a race weekend. But lucky enough, we we got away with it for that first weekend. Yeah, well, because the weather was horrendous, wasn't it? I mean, it was a, it was a great leveller uh, at Donington the opening round last year. I mean, any teething problems perhaps wouldn't have been um, quite so obvious, um, yeah. and. And you and you made a good start with it. You know, you were sort of sixteenth, tenth, and sort of sixth. You know, top six yeah. in the first uh, first first round of the season. Um, and again, it was another year. You were around the fringes of the top ten, 
Um, now, I'm, I know you can't give all details and stuff. Uh, I'm very aware of that. Um, and there's all kinds of rumours going round about who's coming in, who's going out, what the money is or was at the team and everything else like that. And the finances, you had to depart partway through the season um, as much as you can. Um, can you tell us why that was or how um, that had to happen? I suppose the best way of putting it is uh, being maybe a joint number one with Dan Lloyd at yeah. Team Hard. Um, Tony um, subsidised my drive to um, and helped me fund pretty much all of it. Um, at the start of that year, we done really well. Maybe had probably the best start of the year Team Hard's ever had in the yeah. championship. Um, and at some point, if the, the pot run dry, uh, something had to, to give, and that, that was me. Um, quite a strange feeling. I mean, we come out the back of Auburn Park, and that Saturday, I think we was in the top four all weekend, uh, yeah. all day. And we had a Sunday that was really good, apart from, uh, did we have a breakdown or an engine go? I can't quite remember now. Um, but, yeah, Monday morning, I couldn't believe that, you yeah, know, well, a few weeks after, I couldn't quite believe that that would be it after the, that weekend. So, yeah, I understand again that's that business side. Um, I understood the decision had to get made. Tony's got a business to run. Um, but that was me out. I mean, yeah. if you spoke to me at the time, I probably wasn't as relaxed as I am now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, it's, yeah I, I get it. I get it. It's, yeah. It's just a shame we had to go that way. We we had some unfortunate, expensive failures with the car that were out of our hands, really. Yeah. Um, so something I had to give, and that was me. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. Just, uh, just the nature of the beast, sometimes, isn't it? And, you know, yeah. it, it, it's like, you know, it's like the the finances always talk loudest. But happily, you're able to get back in uh, yeah. for the last two uh, for the last two rounds of the season, which was great. Um, great, great to see. Um, again, I mean, without going into detail, how did all that come about? Was it just the case of things realigned and um, like, Tony had a good day and gave you a bell? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, there was a seat opening. Um, I was adamant that I wasn't going to go back in because uh, I felt like we, my goal of uh, trying to finish top 10 in the championship and get some more podiums was gone. And uh, I think it would look worse for me to come back in. Um, had a couple of calls with Tony and I was still adamant that I wasn't going to go. Um, it wasn't until the team manager, Jamie Warren, um, and my number one mechanic, Adam Phil, um, we had a nice call, and actually they showed me a few bits that would in, you know, that, that tick the box in my head of that we could probably go even faster than we went the first half of the year, um, and that I was able to work with Barry as well um, to carry on our progression with the car and, and do some bits that, that we haven't quite tried at the start of the year. Start of the year. Um, so yeah, that that got me back. Um, and again, like I said earlier, I, I, that I had that back of you know that thought in the back of my head. If if I have a year out, or if I have the rest of this year out, you're not getting back in. Um, so yeah, we jumped back in for the last two, Silverstone and Brands. It, Silverstone was was good. Um, I think probably my fault. I went took the team down the wrong direction setup wise. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I'd take that one on the chin. We had a decent car. But again, I just think it was on the back foot. After watching uh, a few onboards and a, a few things from uh, Mike Dole's pole lap, where he beat the Napa, uh, the Napa streak. He did, um, yeah. I think I was taking the, the guys down a path where having a car that turned maybe well too well, which at Silverstone, for whatever reason, looked like it didn't work that weekend. Maybe right. needed to a little bit more number. So, yeah. I, I'll probably take that one on the chin. I think we still had a decent-ish weekend. We had a bit of accident damage on Sunday. Yeah. Um, yeah, that place is it is luck of the draw. Um, the toe is fairly big, and it's just one long train. So yeah. if one's coming past, three are coming past. And yeah. uh, I remember there was a moment. Was it? Was it? Is it Brooklands 
the left-hander before Luffield, that left-hander. It's like every lap, I think you got sideways. I think Robo got sideways and then someone else got sideways. It was just everyone barreling into this one Harry with the toe, wasn't it? it was yeah. So, crazy. Yeah, it's just uh, a hard... That, that place for a touring car, which TV don't show as much. There's so many pinch points across the lap. So you can be, you know, two by two the whole lap and, you know, something's got to give at some point and sometimes you come off worse, which it looks like I did for that weekend. Yeah, just once. But I think you still came straight back in with fifth in that first race. Um, but then um, things got dialed back in and sorted out for brands. Obviously, team's home circuit. The team know it well. You know, you know it well. Um, and it was just you managed to get another podium at brands, your third B BTCC podium, the third at brands. And the first one without the reverse grid getting involved. I mean, you were on it straight straight from the get go, weren't you? That weekend, yeah. it was it was fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah, very happy with the weekend. We had a decent car underneath us. It was the first weekend where I felt like I could um, race. I say first weekend, but it was it was a st standout weekend for me where I felt like like I could race in that top three and and attack hard um, when i lose a position i can fight back um which is a shame because i think if we had that progression maybe on to this year where we ended the year with the car i think we'd be on to something quite special um yeah we really made some changes that really seem to work at brands hatch yeah absolutely and um forgive me i forget where you qualified but i think when you were you, you were in the top top five or six weren't you and um, I remember all the the uh, commentary saying that you know you had got it all completely dialed in and mm -hmm. um, and just it's just a great way to round out the season, isn't it? To go, you know, to go um, having been out, come back in, and then to go out with a podium um, on the home circuit for the team. Pretty much perfect, perfect way to end the season, wasn't it? I guess. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh um it is a shame i mean we uh i think the main goal for that year was the independence um which up until the departure we we were you know dueling with josh cook yeah, um, right. yeah. and that was our main main objective and finishing the year off with uh a winner and an independence win it, it would have been a nice way to end the year if we had the full season um but yeah doing it on your home weekend you know you can't ask for any any more than that having your family there um yeah it was great yeah perfect great stuff um there's, there's, uh, what we got here uh just before we get onto the west surrey racing which we're going to come to right now um question from uh dan mayhew he says what what was it uh like working with touring car legends like barry and uh and with matt neil of course um i mean if you can't learn from those two then yeah, you're probably in the wrong game, aren't you? Yeah, they, I mean, you, you get found out fairly quick. These guys have been around it for a long time, so yeah. I was just learning off them. Um, uh, first, from an engineering standpoint, your, your engineer, in my opinion, has to be your best friend. Um, and me and Barry get on really well uh, after our year together, our, our ups and lows. Um, yeah, we, I had full trust in him. Um, I was more trying to learn off him just any decision that he made set up wise from my feedback um i wanted to know why he's doing it um just so i could carry that that mindset into whatever else i do um from matt's side of it uh things he was um just a, a voice over the shoulder i suppose um from an engineering standpoint but and just for his knowledge in terms of racing and uh how how to go about each session and uh and also after the season well as well he's helped me so much uh just make touring car decisions and motorsport decisions and we still talk now and then now it's just a good friend to have um and like i say we're so lucky they would never um come down to our end of the grid com compared to where they were uh, so we're so lucky to get them and i think we opened their eyes as well from a team standpoint when they first turned up um i think you know they brought some massive changes to the team, but I think they uh, they enjoyed it being with us for the year. Yeah, absolutely. No, great stuff. Um, right, we're going to get onto West Surrey, and then I'm going to get to some of the questions in the comments. We're going to have to rattle through because there's loads of them scrolling in. You guys are on fire this evening. Um, 2024 
it's pretty obvious what the goal is. I mean, West Surrey Racing. Um, before we go any further, I've got to say a huge thank you uh, to uh, uh, Jamie at the comms team for West Surrey Racing for getting in touch over the weekend, despite me not feeling very well. It was lovely to uh, to be asked. Uh, you know, it was it was not for someone to ask me uh, <laughs> rather than the other way around, which was lovely. So thank you to everyone um, who's made uh, this this evening happen. Um, obviously, the goal is full seat with West Surrey Racing. I mean, who wouldn't love that? Um, you know, most, one of the most, well, probably the most successful team in the last what, 20, 25 odd years or more. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how did it first come about the discussion with Dick Bennett's, I mean, you know, Dick's legend uh, of British motorsport, uh, even for a New Zealander, uh, one of my heroes in motorsport. How did it all come about that you, you, you guys started talking? Uh, it, it happened fairly late uh, in the day, um, not, you know, only probably about a month ago, if that. Wow. Yeah, very late. Um, wow. And they were, you know, to my surprise, fairly keen, very keen to get me involved, which was quite flattering. Um, nice. I've always dreamed of being in a BMW and, you know, they're a mega team. And, uh, yeah, the only hurdles of how how we're going to make this happen like i said earlier in the chat is this so someone's got to pay you know money's got to come from somewhere unfortunately this driving around in circles just seems to uh, cost a lot of money so um yeah they've been working very hard and, and you know can't thank them enough to work alongside me to make this happen um so we come up with an idea that actually getting a test in the car and putting some laps in would, would work is magic to try and create some funding which hopefully it's looking like it you know we, we're not counting down the days anymore we're counting down the hours um wow. yeah it, you know the season starts just around the corner isn't it um yeah, yeah. and uh yeah it's, it's 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 very late in the day um so we was lucky enough to get the test in thank you to a star maintenance contractors and ergo consultancy for putting that together and making that happen and yeah, to my surprise, I got to drive a BMW, loved every minute of it. Um, complete different way to achieve a lap in a touring car. Uh, in my opinion, a lot more rewarding um, from a real drive standpoint. Uh, when you hook a lap together, you get rewarded with lap time, whereas um, I felt like you could um, almost, in the front wheel drive, you know, you're phoning home before you, you got in because you <laughs> <laughs> if it was your last go and you'd look down and you'd find a tenth <laughs> and uh yeah whereas the bmw even though we didn't have hybrid um i was there there about share i think was in the top five best part of the day um so i was very happy yeah fantastic um some questions that came in uh, two very similar ones and i think they've heard others that had asked this question or alluded to it um um we've got a diff Owen evans and John William Chester, evening guys. Um, they both asked a similar question, and in, in a nutshell, is that how did it compare to the other cars that you've driven? I mean, obviously, like Diffan's gone into detail. He said with you know uh, with the Audi and the VW and the Cooper and stuff. Um, without wishing to sort of talk negatively about the other ones, I mean, how different was the WSR BMW? Um... Well, they're all the same underneath that bodywork. You know, the, the cars all look completely different. And it's when you explain to some people that, you know, the front end underneath a, a Honda is exactly the same as a, I don't know, an Infiniti or, you know, a Cupra or whatever. Um, from a damp inside and, you know, when you see us take those curves, it feels fairly similar. Um, in the real drive, um, in real drive, like I say, you attack the lap a little different. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of driving, they felt for, to me fairly similar. What you have to do in the car is completely different. Um, but yeah, to drive a touring, it feels like a big old touring car. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. No, I love that. I mean, there's all these different things that we look at as fans from the inside, look at it and is it rear wheel? Is it that? Is it stiff? Is it this and yeah. that? Where, whereas the driver just comes out and says, yeah, it's just a great car to drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> love that. Um, but I mean, it's uh, uh, here's a question from Diffan. I mean, I don't know if you can answer this, don't worry if you can't. Um, Diffan when Evans just said, If you will not have put pen to paper by media day next week, 
um will you still be making an appearance at the track or will you be mooching around the wsr garage or i mean i mean do you, basically it's even if you've not signed are you going to be at media day i think that one uh uh most probably yeah yeah even if we haven't um don't get me wrong if if media day comes around i'm i'm still pushing to get signed and you know until thursday probably about six in the afternoon i'm still pushing to make the grid right um, yeah yeah, That's media day would be great to get it done before then. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, God, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, that'd be lovely. Um, that'd be a treat. But uh, yeah, um, I think it'd be good for me to be there and, and be of the team. Yeah, good stuff. And uh, you know, I think there's a lot of people hoping that uh, you know we we said we're counting down hours, and hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll be a positive countdown, and you can get the deal done. And there's, there's yeah. I mean, from the comments, there's loads and loads of people uh, wanting to see you in there. Thank you. You in the car. They're all talking about Bobby Thompson, 2024 BTCC champion already. Look, there are. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of love out there for you, which is, uh, well, which which is a given. Um, yeah. Just quickly, um, one from Thomas Parker. He said, what was it like having Nick Hamilton as one of your teammates? Great yeah. guy. Um, and uh, did you bump into Lewis at any point? Did you ever yeah, see him talking around Donington in his hoodie? <laughs> yeah, I did. And, and, and it shocked me. Um, I always said, oh, if I met you know, someone like Lewis, a, a you know, a race driver is well known and a, a celebrity race driver, maybe we should call him. Yeah, um, I would just you know not get starstruck as much as I, as I probably would like to admit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, from the first question, being teammates with Nick is amazing. Lovely bloke, really, really nice guy. Um, I like to try and help him throughout the year, data wise, and just sitting alongside him where we sat in the engineering office was uh next to each other so we always talk about the car our feedback um and then yeah some amazing things uh that he's done for uh the last two years he was my teammate it was yeah really really eye-opening of what he goes through for a day and one thing that um maybe i shouldn't say but his body and how he goes about driving the touring car is absolutely insane. It's incredible, he, isn't it? Yeah, and what he has to go through when after the race, and whilst we're all sitting at laptops in the, the trucks, um, do you know having our debriefs, he's doing that whilst um, you know getting his body looked over and making sure he's ready for the next race, which is just I know what I'm like, <laughs> you know trying to get myself ready you know he's, how he does it i don't know and he does a mega job really really good job yeah i mean it's incredible i mean you see him walking around he's always got a smile on his face he's got time for everyone um he's such a lovely bloke and just to just to get in the car and and get the thing moving um yeah. obviously with the condition that he has is yeah. it is nothing short of i mean it's almost ludicrous that he can do it it's 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 yeah it's just a measure of who he is and he's a great guy and yeah. i've said it on this kind of thing before i mean he's he gets a lot of stick from some people who haven't got a clue what they're talking about basically and um yeah anyone who does that has got no place in yeah. 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 Just, yeah. what an amazing guy yeah um right okay i mean, I mean there's loads we can go through i'm keeping on the time there's been so many questions that have come yeah. in um they've got some fun questions that i always try and finish on but i think you guys in the comments you've uh You've covered them all. Um, let's just go through one very, very quickly. Craig Meekle, evening, Craig. Um, thank you for your patience, by the way, everyone, uh, getting to this. Um, if you could build a BTCC team, who would be the dream team, past, present, and future? Okay, let, right. let's say three cars, three car team. Three <laughs> who would be your dream team? Sutton. Ash, yeah. Am I driving as well? Yeah. Yeah. So Sutton, myself, um, yeah, you, you can't you can't count Sutton now, is he? He's obviously he's obviously knows what he's doing. He's got something locked down, isn't he? <laughs> he's, I mean, yeah, he's got something, isn't he? He's, he's got a big um, Who would my third one be? I would probably say James Gornell. Oh, gee, okay, yeah. excellent. Yeah, he was a mega teammate, really fair. Uh, I loved being with Dan as well last season. Uh, I'd have to, if I had four, I'd be Dan and Jiggy. Um, oh, we'll go for um, I, We worked really well with Dan um, and Jiggy. It's very similar. You know, normally with this 
the teammates in touring car, we say teammates and we're wearing the same colours, but you're still fighting for yourself. Where those two teammates were quite fair and we worked really well together to get through some set-up stuff and work through the weekend. So, uh, yeah, that would be my, my four-car team. Yeah, nice one. Um, one from uh, Gemma Bicker earlier. Evening, Gemma. Um, she said, um, obviously, yeah, you'd like to get the West Surrey seat. Um, yeah. Do you think you'd uh, get on well with uh, Colin, Adam and Jake? Yeah, from, from the test, it was all right. I mean, I've known Jake since we were kids, probably since yeah. he was like eight years old. I've been racing with Jake. Uh, I see Jake in the weekday. So, yeah, from Jake, Jake's standpoint, it'd be fine. Um, likewise, with, with Colin, I haven't spoke to Colin much other than the, the test the other the other week. But, uh, yeah, they seem lovely guys and they seem like a, they've got a mindset that, you know, for the team and... Um, working together to get the best car. Um, so from that standpoint, yeah, I'd love to work with you. Yeah, fantastic. And obviously with Dick Bennett so overseeing it all, that would be uh, very, very cool. Um, mm -hmm. uh, AD Coulson, evening AD, he says, if you could drive any, oh, good question this, because you've driven loads of cars with your coaching, you've done a Dubai 24 hours and all these other fantastic machines that you fly off around the world, <laughs> drive at Sebring, uh, places like that, it's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, if you could drive any car from any era of motorsport, what would it be? That is a shocking question. <laughs> any any car of any any era. Do you know what? I don't think enough about these. I should think more when they come in. I, yeah. I'd go to something very different and very weird. Uh, a lot of people would say, you know, like old F1 car. I'd, I'd like to have a crack at a NASCAR. <laughs> something really weird. Um, yeah. Like an old, yeah, the old... Uh, 90s early 2000s nascar right sort of like dale earnhardt good wrench type yeah yeah so completely different that i know that i'll never get a chance to ever drive ever again yeah that would be cool i mean we had a quick chat about nascar just before we came on and talk about little models and stuff and yeah. mine would always be that ricky rudd tied yeah. one from about 1995 that was yeah. the first car i ever saw uh that'd be a cool one okay let's have a quick we'll do a very quick stroll Oh, good question. Uh, Dave Zeus-Cox. Evening, Dave. Uh, what teammate have you learned from the most in your career? That's a good one. That is a good one. Oh, I like that. Dave is full of good questions. Do we like Dave? Michael Kane. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Blimey. Is that on track and off it, or, sh or should we not go there? <laughs> <laughs> um, Michael Kane. Um yeah. And Goffey, I'd say. Goffey, yeah. for me, he, you know, he came from WSR the year before, so he was in his prime touring car speedy era. And he, uh, he, you know, he taught, taught me a lot engineering-wise, probably without even knowing it. Um, but, yeah, Michael Kane outside the car. Yeah, he taught me a lot. <laughs> yeah, should, we, should we skip along? Uh, yeah, we skip along. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, proper question. Katie Eames. Evening, Katie. What's your favourite biscuit and what's your favourite ice cream flavour? Oh, God. <laughs> now we're into the bones. <laughs> biscuit, cho chocolate digestive, boring. Uh, no, chocolate hobnob. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and ice cream. Um, I don't have much ice cream, but I like Little Moons. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. little things, yeah. So. Little ones, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Nice one. Um, Lee Spilsbury, evening, Lee. Um, says, do you have a racing simulator? That looks like one next to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, this is a good one, um, for those of us who don't use them, how realistic are they? Because I'm not a, uh, and I know it's not gaming before anyone shoots me down. Um, I'm not a gamer. I'm not into the whole virtual thing. Yeah. Um, and they, but I spoke with a driver on the Mini Challenge, and he said that he'd never driven Brands Hatch before. And he basically just pounded around on the sim yeah. beforehand. He'd done it, and he felt like he knew the place. I mean, are they that that realistic yeah. now? From 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 a track standpoint, they're exactly the same. Um, the the tracks are laser scanned and then put into the sim. Um, I do a lot of work overseas, um, and with coaching, you're required to get a lap, you know, near as far as fast as the lap could be uh, within a few laps. So you can't drive the customer's car 
for 25 minutes, getting your eye in to go for a lap it needs to be done in four laps. So when you go to a lot of these places, I'll do a whole day to half a day on that. And uh, yeah, you can learn the track to the T. Um, they're, they're great. I mean, I'd like to say at the start, I got it to help my own racing. <laughs> and then within a week, I was obsessed with just doing other stuff. I do a lot of esports stuff and um, yeah, some proper geeky stuff. Um, <laughs> you know what? I should use it for my own racing, but I don't. I, I do a lot of, um, you know, esportsy sim racing stuff, and I, I love it. Okay, I love it. It's, it. it's something that's growing massively. And, yeah. uh, but as a tool, yeah, you know, if, if I'm abroad somewhere I've not been, then yeah, I'll definitely do a load of laps on that on that track. Brilliant. That's great. I mean, I'm, I'm still astounded at how realistic they mm. uh, they uh, they can be. Um, Sim's question to what was before, but a bit more uh, touring car specific from Alistair uh, Jeremy. Evening, Alistair. You live just down the road from me. Um, what touring car from whatever season would you like to drive? So similar to the last one, but more touring car related. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I already know what my answer to this would always be, because but I'm old. Um, there's two i'd like to drive the old um ford mondeo oh yeah 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 um and weird one that, that i don't know why i'd like to have a crack of it that subaru of org cult yeah. it's, it's a cult one isn't it it's become yeah, it's, it's a controversial car <laughs> it's it's up there with the volvo from the mid 90s isn't it the big estate yeah i, I want to i'd like to try on that and when you watch some of the onboards just on youtube it yeah, it looks a it looks a good car. Yeah, awesome, good shout. Um, okay, one more. For, uh, Diffan Win Evans. He said uh, you've run with number nineteen in the BTCC. How did you come to decide to run with that number, or was it given to you once and you stuck with it, or or is that? Uh, it's a fairly boring story. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> all drivers have some cool stories, and mine. I've, I've always been number forty. Uh, I've been forty. My, my dad was forty-one. I got from 41 to 42 in, in the family uh and then uh, on karting weekends when we'd race abroad uh it was it was it was uh better to be a low uh odd number so you're in with the better seeded drivers okay to you with one free you know and uh, yeah that was the reason we went for that um yeah quite boring unfortunately i wish i had oh. change that we're going to make a more sexy story <laughs> yeah do I, I, yeah some i don't know you're in vegas once and you had yeah. a, a couple yeah. of dollars on 19 or something yeah, yeah this, <laughs> that. throw that in um oh someone did ask forgive me i forget who it was um which do you prefer uh brands gp or brands indie that was a good one gp yeah good Indy's strategy. Strategy. see yeah. every single person who's come on mate, from yourself to the young mini drivers to Mario and Danny Sullivan and guys like that. Brands Hatch always comes up and everyone loves it. Brands Hatch GP. Yeah. Uh, they always say it was a fantastic place what, to One thing I love about the Indy, it feels like a, a stadium though, even for the drivers, because everyone, you're at the lowest point. Everyone's looking in. So it's like, yes, yeah, so it's our closest we get to like a stadium circuit, really. Well, see, that's cool. Yeah, see, no one's yeah. ever said that before. And now you mentioned it. I mean, Thing is, my only yeah, my only experience with Brands Hatch, I was uh, there was um, I was invited along to a team who's running in the uh, in the uh, Hyundai Coupe Cup uh, do, to do a bit of work for them, uh, do a few bits for them, and I got taken round in a Hyundai Coupe round uh, Brands Hatch. First time I'd I'd ever gone round. Yeah. Um, and obviously the big uh, the big ticket corner is Paddock Hill Bend, and that is mental. I mean, I almost threw up three or four times when it when it when it bottoms out. But one that got me was. The little left kink at Surtees, because yeah. in my mind I always thought it's I was kind of slowing down the end of the lap. It's not a spectacular whatever. Surtees on the indie circuit is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's the hardest corner on the track, really. Brilliant corner. Um, yeah, and uh, to be honest, it, it it sets you up for the main straight as well. Because if you're overdriving there, you're in the wrong position for the last corner and kills you down the main straight, which on such a short lap makes a massive difference yeah it's uh very hard in the touring car very hard yeah for sure and when you're on the left hand side of the car that curb goes right through your backside as well <laughs> <It's>, uh, 
<laughs> it's a proper job. Um, I've just seen uh, Mikey Doble. Evening, Mikey is tuning in. He said this has made the the journey back from Croft a lot less boring. Well, that's good. We yeah. didn't want to make it any more boring. So okay, well. nice one, thanks, Mikey. Um, another question here from uh, Pete Folland on Facebook. Hello, Pete. He said, uh, "Hope the deal is." Oh, uh, going well. Been following you for a long time. Mm -hmm. Have you ever played Cards Against Humanity? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Every goes Christmas, on, yeah, every Christmas with uh, with probably a family member that shouldn't be uh, playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if uh, if you haven't played Cards Against Humanity, give it a go, but don't tell anyone. Um, mm -hmm. What we've got here. Let's have a quick look through. There's loads of talk about BTCC and possibilities and things like that. Okay, here we go. We are going to go with two more, and then I'm going to chuck a couple in, and then we're going to finish, uh, everyone. Um, oh, Drew Crease is in. E e evening, Drew. That's uh, Michael's brother. He's on the. He's on Twitter. Um, he's just asking how the car wants to drive, which you covered before. You're going to have to hit rewind. I'm afraid, Drew. Uh, no worries, mate. Um, Stuart Turner. Good question. What tires do you like racing on, and why? I guess that's sort of. In terms of the soft, package, the three soft and the hard, and all yeah. The um, the, well, we, we do so much work on the medium, um, the car's built around the medium, really. Um, I didn't get a chance to drive the, the soft tyre in the BMW, um, but if I can go by what it felt like in front wheel drive, and it almost masks the setup. You can you could be out the window setup wise and have softs on, and the thing just feel insane, absolutely insane. Um, and from what Adam Morgan's told me, it feels fairly the same real drive as well. So, uh, yeah, uh, the hard is hard work. Um, you've got to really wake it up. And, uh, yeah, sometimes you can be out of the window in that massively. Um, but, yeah, they, they, they work their purpose. They make a good show. And, uh, yeah, the soft, though. If, if we could run on softs the full year, that would be insane. Yeah, top job. Good yeah. stuff. Um, we've stepped away from motorsport here. Sharon Milburn. Uh, evening, Shaz. Uh, <laughs> what was your favourite subject at school? <laughs> oh, school. Bloody None of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to like graphics because my teacher uh, raced. I don't know what he raced, unless he was lying to me. But <laughs> I used to, yeah, I used to talk to him about racing. <laughs> so. Um. Okay, they're going to go with, yeah, last one here, last one, folks. Um, uh, Diffo and Evan Evans again, even Diffo. Um, I I was thinking about this earlier, whether to bring it up or not, so I'm going to blame this one on Diffo. Nice. Uh, you and Creasy clashed with each other in race two at Brands in 2020. That's when he was in the Honda, wasn't it? And you ended yeah. up in the out the back. Um, have you made up since? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, uh, touring car, you, you know, you have your enemies whilst you're in it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, you're trying to get 30 odd big cars around tracks that are probably too small for the car. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. Good. And uh, yeah, you know, tension rises as you drive and so. Yeah, absolutely. But you, it all kind of simmers down at the end. Um, yeah. Okay, this is the last question before I get to my last couple. Uh, Jordan Snow, evening, Jordan. Who's your favourite all time BTCC driver? Oh. <laughs> You're gonna, you, you, this is, this is gonna upset some people, isn't it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna upset Mikey Dobo. He's watching. <laughs> Mikey, uh, put your fingers in your ears. <laughs> yeah, I um, I, I like Plato. I think he's a good guy. Um, yeah. You know, he's become a bit of a friend over the last few years, and uh, yeah, he's a funny guy. And he, he he's just he's just the the all star touring car guy for me. He's you know he's hilarious. Um, they just from from an out, outside the car point of view, I think what he does is is fairly very good. Yeah, absolutely, and he's and he's been a big part in making the BTCC what it's become, yeah. uh, which is absolutely yeah, uh, is absolutely fantastic. Okay, right, last question, Aaron Thompson, pro license <laughs> I racing or a win in the BTCC? <laughs> <laughs> uh, win in the BTCC. Yeah, that might be the answer. I think he's just messing around, isn't he? Okay. Um, okay, I've just got a couple that I always chuck in here right at the end. Um, let's have a look. Um, okay, apart from, I mean, we, this again, it kind of ties in with some of the questions that were before. I mean, outside the BTCC, is there anything that you'd like to have a go in if you could choose 
anything like Aussie supercars, I mean, NASCAR we touched on. Yeah. That IndyCar, that's... anything like that, Le Mans, or, you know, yeah. or a proper LMP or... Um, yeah, that, that one comes up for a lot of people when a lot yeah. of people V8 supercars. It is cool. Um, and of course, you, you'd love to have a go over there. They, they're a really cool car. But again, I'd like to have a crack at the NASCAR side of things. Yeah. Um, just to see what it's like. I have no idea of what it's like in my head, where some other things you can sort of, you know, really right. experience. Um, failing that, yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd love to have a go at LMP2. Yeah. Um, I sound that fun, really cool. Um, been on a few of their weekends um, uh, over the last year or two, and yeah, watching from the sidelines, it looks insane. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like having a go of all sorts. I, I, I work in cars that are all the way from front wheel drive minis to the way up to aero cars and everything. So, yeah, yeah it's, uh, yeah, I'd have a go in anything. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I, I think that's a good point about NASCAR, isn't it? It's so far. I mean, people don't realise it's so far removed from anything else. I mean, we've got Euro NASCAR over here, which which is great, but proper NASCAR, it's it's a different planet. It's yeah, yeah. incredible stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, you just touched on you do a lot of driver coaching. You've driven a lot of amazing cars and some amazing circuits. Um, have you got a favourite car that you've driven and a favourite circuit that you've driven? Um. Favourite circuit, uh, probably Sebring. It's pretty cool. Oh, great shout. Bumpy as hell, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Watkins Glen. I do a lot of it uh, with the, uh, over in America, so a lot of the circuits wow. I've been to in the States, yeah. Watkins wow. Glen's pretty cool. Um, I think they're all tracks that you play on games growing up. And um, I've recently driven the uh, BMW uh, M4 GT3, which was really, wow. really cool experience. And, uh, yeah. Uh, getting some time in GT3 is something I'd love to do more of. Yeah, that would be very cool. <laughs> uh, Mikey Double said that you know you kill the tyres too quickly in NASCAR when I race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and Mikey have done a lot of sim stuff together. So. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> he's he's I'll Mr. Bet. Oval, man. He is. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, last question. And anyone who's tuned into these knows what's coming. It's an absolute pest of a question. I mean, you've driven or you've shared a track with a lot of great drivers. I'm just going to name some. I mean, right from you, some of the some of the GT guys from like, you know, you've shared the track with like Dries Van Tour and Fred Vervish, Mara Wengel, Rafael Marcello, Anton Di Pasquale, Luca Engsler, guys like Ian Loggy, legend, uh, Larry Turnvord and Nick Yololi, um, and then into the British touring cars, you know, Chilton and Austin and Mark Blundell, Goff, mm -hmm. Cook, Camish, Hill, Ingram, Huff, Collard, Jordan Sutton, Turkington, Neil, Plato, uh, Mikey Doble. Um, <laughs> all these uh, fantastic drivers. I mean, are there any that stand out? Uh, maybe it's not being the best, but just as being just impressive or just for what they – or for how they drive or for who they are. Or is, are there are there any drivers that you've come across that you think he's pretty good? Or she, of course. Uh, from a car standpoint, not so much. Uh, I think – I, I don't know. I, I, I try and see everything as achievable. Uh, and then to put that, I don't know how to put that. In, in a way, I'm just trying to look at it. everyone as well. If he's doing it, I can do it. But I yeah. remember in, in terms of someone that sticks out in my mind, uh, Jack Aiken uh, in Carlin was really. I had cool. Jack on here a few weeks ago. That bloke, that bloke needs to open his mouth and get shouting a bit more because he's yeah. really, really good, isn't he? He's good, yeah. And uh, I'm in a car. It was, uh, it's just ruthless. I mean, he wouldn't knows never an answer when battling with him. And even if you fight him for bloody last place, he's just ruthless. I remember that as a car, as a kid, you'd come up behind him or he's coming behind you and you, you know you've got a race on your hands, yeah. Yeah, wow. I'm 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 going to send him a message in a minute. Telling him that he'll be well happy. <laughs> and he's in DTM uh, this year, isn't he? He's just got a DTM this year, so uh, yeah, so that'd be cool. That's something you could give it a go as well. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, guys, I mean, we've gone again. We're approaching two hours once again. Um, it, it always happens. Um, but um, first, I just want to say, oh, uh, I haven't got time for any more. Sorry, folks. Yeah, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Can we go for one more? All oh, right, one more. It's from Aaron Thompson, so you know what's going on. Um, please <laughs> ask him about his first eye racing, about his first racing series, Banger Racing in Nan's Front. 
Uh, it's like <laughs> racing in Nan's living room. Great story. Yeah, this is the one to end on. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can, <laughs> we'll brush over that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's that's probably an even better answer than what actually went on um right well i mean it, it's i think that's a, that's a good place to end um bobby thank you so much for coming on uh, we got around to it eventually um i really appreciate you coming on talking through your journey and and your hopes for 2024 which uh, by the sounds of it uh, everyone shares thank you very much i uh, yeah it's been great to uh, chat to you and uh, i'll keep an eye out for the other people you've got on it yeah, well, we're booked up until the end of May, uh, so uh, <laughs> we'll be keeping busy. But uh, no, it was great. You know, we finally got around to it. Thank you very much for coming on. And um, thank you to everyone in, in the comments. I hope we've uh, covered everything. Um, you guys have been on great form. So thank you very much um, for all your support uh, of the page, everyone. Um, thanks again to everyone at WSR, um, you know, to uh, to Bobby and to your dad, Paul, as well, who's uh, who's been very helpful in getting this over the line um and we'll see you very soon um so final one again all the very best uh, for the next week or so uh, bobby and hopefully uh and hopefully we'll see you uh in 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 that car that we mentioned yes i very hope so <laughs> great stuff uh thanks very much everyone um we'll be announcing another one uh tomorrow evening so um we'll see you very soon thank you very much everyone and uh good night